Chapter 9, Community Networks. Chapter 9 is probably the one part of the book that has aged badly. When it was conceived, the notion of the cyber community was very much around centralised sites. We looked at bulletin boards, forums, news groups. These were internet locations that were very driven by shared common interest and also a sort of internet physical proximity. With the rise of social media platforms, Instagram isn't a singular community. Tumblr, whilst described occasionally as, oh, this site, or that's so Tumblr, or Tumblr, you know, there's a sort of Tumblr response, it's not a cohesive singular unit. So what's happening now is that we're finding ad hoc community that you're seeing that based on communication and communications theory, and a chunk of the chapter nine is around communication, setting the framework. Communication can be individual. It can be a group where it's one person broadcasts to many, and it can be group dynamic. One person broadcasts to many and gets individual responses back. We now have an unfortunate thing where we've got dogpiling, which is met, group many to one, where a, a range of people pick a singular target and broadcast at them. That was not what we expected to have happen. Not sure how we missed that, but we did. Communication does not equate to community. Talking to someone does not mean that you are part of their their internet tribe, you're not part of their clan, you're not a member of their community. Community comes with types and mechanisms and approaches. So you have, again, real was a bad term for this, but we have community that is physical. A university campus, a suburb, a suburban church, a village in rural England, a small country town out in Western Victoria. These are physically bounded, co-located spaces. These become communities by proximity. We then have the virtual community, which is community by a common bond. And this is not actually virtual in terms of internet. This is bonding by we are all members of a shared interest. Then we have the cyber community. Now, cyber community was a phrase I used back in 1998 to describe the virtual communities that use technology. And you'll note the phrasing here, the language is ancient in internet terms. Virtual community dependent on high technology. And the fact that we have high technology and low technology Whereas now we just have technology. Community comes with frameworks. And the first thing is that community is about real people. As of yet, we've just got one Go playing robot that's dominating the world. But if Facebook's Go playing robot and Google's Go playing robot, and assuming, say, uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Nike, all built robots to play the game of Go. If those five robots got together on a server somewhere to swap notes and talk about their experience and shared experience, that would be the first time we'd have unreal people. But the thing about the communities is that they consist of people, they are real people, they have lives of which this community is part. Communities come together from the shared goods of value which uh, was Howard Rheingold's idea of there is community forms around common thematic interests, agreed understandings, shared experience, and shared value. The whole, if I drew, the whole community communing and the whole process is basically taking what happens in the world in physical proximity and using it in social proximity on the internet. 
So the shared goods of value are an important aspect. They are the common points. They bind communities together and they're a point of identification. They can be very broad, like being a fan of Star Wars puts you in the community of Star Wars fans. Depending on the level of gatekeeper uh, that you have in your community, your goods of value may be very specific. That you're not a proper member of the community unless you pass certain, you have certain shared goods, like an arcane knowledge of the operation of Harley Davidson motorcycle engines and certain physical traits and certain attribute traits. So the shared goods of value can be very broad or very specific. The key is they bind the community together. The other key is that a hashtag is not a shared good of value. A hashtag is an indexing mechanism. And that's the challenge we're facing in the modern social media platforms is building communities that are based around that shared good of value when a hashtag is only a means to find someone else. It's not a means to identify, yes, they're part of that community. So in the shared goods, one of the central things is the sense of belonging. To be part of a community because you feel part of the community is crucial. We talk, this is one of the things I think the takeout from this chapter is that the shared goods of value are the most important aspect. You need this. This is why places like Reddit have the term Redditor. It's a sense of belonging. It's a label of ownership. Uh, the common or unifying interests that can also be shared suffering, experience, or belief. Positive community and negative community. Community can arise from shared suffering, from negative mutual outcomes. The shared goods also require participation. You need to be part of a community to be part of the community. So the 1990 rule becomes really interesting here, is that active participation becomes a key indicator. Same for social network capital. You need to be known inside the community. And the shared knowledge is also the common language, where phrases, meanings, in-jokes, history, knowledge, the idea of community elder and community junior, these are the shared goods. So from a marketer's perspective, when you find a community, there are rules of engagement. First thing is, conversation is not community. Second thing, it's not yours. It's not your community. Unless you have grown up in that community, unless you've been a member of that community and you're a marketer as well, if you come into a community as a marketer, it's not yours, it's not a petri dish, it's not an experimental playground, and it's not a packet of data waiting to be sliced. The other element of engagement is engage, observe, or ignore. So, Community is not conversation. Community is that shared experience. If you have an environment where you talk to the customer, the customer talks to you, but the customers never talk to each other, you have no community. The community has to have that shared goods, sense of belonging, and interaction between community members. Everyone talking to the one account does not equate to the creation of a community. But some of you may have seen this on your social media, that there'll be people who talk to each other, tag each other in conversations. They are, there is a community building then if people are seeing each other as you are facilitating conversations that they are having rather than you are the conversation. It's so important we said it twice, it's not your community. You don't own it. Particularly, the aspect of integrated marketing communication says, we control all the messages. Social media says, customers can co-create the message. Community says, if they're talking about your product and they're not using your brand absolutely correctly, don't correct them. If you walk into and Lego has been guilty of this one because they've got guidelines. If people say Legos, 
It's not the official corporate phrasing, but they're talking about you to each other. They're talking about mates. And if you wouldn't leap across the table at a pub and interrupt someone and say, you've misspoken my brand, don't do it on the internet. So community comes from consumer participation. When the consumers are forming a community, even if it's around your brand, you don't own it. You don't have the IP control over the community. Don't abuse it. Don't regard it as, well, they're only talking to each other because of my products, I own them. No, don't do it. So engage, observe, ignore. Those are your three choices. Engage is the, the consumer and the community are talking about something that you can answer. Show up, declare that you're from the brand, talk to them. Observe is you found a community, just monitor it. Look at what they're talking about. If they're talking about your product, look at what is important to them. What are they regarding as the benefits? Learn from them. Or go, that is a community that is of no interest. We don't, particularly if it's a community of people who you haven't targeted, you don't want, and you're just going, okay, we'll ignore them. We won't engage this community. But basically, it also comes down to this. Engage if you're going to be a real person. Even if you are representing your brand, engage as a real person. Observe if you don't want to actually give away that you're there, and ignore it if you think that people on the internet are elements in a simulation. And this is where I bring up the idea as the plastic people rule and the internet as access to other people. These are two very important things. People often forget that at the other end of the keyboard is a person, not a data set. So, community is pretty short. It's a key part of what you do in terms of social media, particularly those of you who had a user create more followers approach, central to that. But also community is something that happens because people interact with each other. If you can enable it, great. Don't force it. But also, you don't own it, even if you helped create it. They're people. Nobody owns people. Owning people is bad. So don't breach the plastic people rule. And remember, the point of the internet is interaction and access to other people. If community is happening, don't interfere with it.